Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a name set. Uh, creating a name set enables you to create something called asymmetrical, asymmetric reporting. Now the problem that it's trying to solve is how you present some data. So we may have a t pivot table that has data that has actual and forecasted, and these are items, uh, and these are the years, 2010 and 2011. Maybe we only want to see the actual sales, these are sales, so the actual sales for 2010, and then the forecast. So if we try to filter it for uh, the actual for 2010 and then the forecast for 2011, there's not really a good way to do that. It's either one or the other. If I, if I do actual and try to see if I can do the year later on, uh, there's not really a way to do it. Uh, you probably have to kind of take the data and put it into, uh, take the pivot table of data, copy and paste it as values into another range of cells. Or uh, there's another way to do it. You can you can try to hide it. You can go and hide this. We have our uh, actuals here, or, or the combination here. We'll hide that, and then we'll just hide the, uh, the totals here. Uh, left click and hide, and then we have our actual forecast, but we don't have our, um, I guess our field headings uh, that help us kind of indicate this is 2011. We can add that in there, but it kind of adds to the similar problem here. And if we added data to the table and refresh the table, we'd have to uh, readjust these things again. So let me go ahead and unhide this. There's another way that we can do this, and this is with the name set feature in Excel. Now, the name set feature is available in the pivot table, but if you go under analyze here, it's under the calculations group. If you go under analyze field item sets, if I click that drop down, you'll notice that uh, we have the sets. These are the name set commands, and they're grayed out. And the reason why it's grayed out is name sets are not available in regular pivot tables. They have to be performed on an OLAP cube. Now, the most I know about an OLAP cube is how to spell OLAP, but there is a feature in Excel using the power pivot and data model. And if you knew how to write uh, MDX, which is the expression language to uh, put data into an OLAP cube, then you can create that. But there's another way to do this. And basically, it's putting the data into a pivot table, but putting it into the data model. So the data model is just another way uh, that Excel can store data in a database format, a columnar database format. And it's optimized for large data sets, and you can do a lot of fancy things with it. But we're just going to be covering the uh, name set feature here and how we can create that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this particular uh, pivot table. Let me go and just select this set of ranges. Go ahead and press delete, right click, and then delete. And I'm going to go ahead and create a um, pivot table from this. So I select anywhere within the range of cells here, go under insert, and insert a pivot table here. And the thing that I want to do is I'm going to do the same thing as I, I have my range here that I'm going to be included in the pivot table. And I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet. I'm just going to put it here uh, as I had before. Uh, I'm going to put it here in cell uh, G5. And what I want to do is I want to add this to the data model. I'm going to click on that, click OK. So it's going to give me the fields that I can put in to create this pivot table. So I'm going to go ahead and just put uh, item, click on item. Since, it, it, since it's text, it's going to Excel automatically puts it in as rows. I'm going to put the year on the top and then have the the type uh, afterwards and then the value, the sales, they're going to go into the values field, right? So I have completed that table where I had before. But since we added this to the data model, if I go up to the Analyze tab under the Pivot Tables under the Calculations group, and I click down here, you notice now I have those options that are no longer grayed out. So I can create a name set out of this. And what I can do here is I'm going to create it based on the column items, these column items, because I want it to have the 2010 actuals and the 2010 forecast here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to give me a, a new set window. So I'm going to call this, uh, go ahead and call this 2010 actual and then 2011 forecast. And basically, I can just select or deselect the ones or remove the ones that I do not need. So I need the actuals. I don't need the 2010 forecast. I'm going to delete that. I don't need the 2010 all. Uh, and I just I don't need the 2011 actuals. And I just need the forecast. And everything else, I'm going to go ahead and remove. So I have my 2010 actual and 2011 forecast. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now. It's done it for us. And basically, it hasn't really um, 
change the table too much. It's just this change the display of the table. So you can see I have my sets here. So I can click on that if I just wanted to see the actual forecast. If I want to see the other items again, I can go ahead and just deselect that. And I'll go ahead and bring them down here again. So it's basically just changing the view of it. If I, if I want to see that, if I didn't want to see that, I, I can go ahead and look at my name set. Oops, let me go ahead and cancel that. Let me go ahead and uh, remove some of the items here and click on that. So whoops, it looks like it's, it's moved my actual forecast down to the rows. Let me go ahead and move it over to the columns. And that's what I wanted to see. And also, you can notice that it's in compact view. If I didn't want to see compact view, it, so I can get my um, prop, the proper uh, headings here. Let me go ahead and go to tabular view, so I get my proper headings there. So that's one way we can use name sets to get a different a display of the data. Uh, this is called asymmetrical reporting. Uh, another way that we can do it is we can go ahead and create name sets for our, our rows because we just created ones for our columns. If we wanted to create ones for our rows, uh, basically the same thing we do here. We go ahead and go under analyze, go to name sets. Let's go and create some for our row items. Uh, we, and let's say we wanted to call the we, we wanted to call the clothing items uh, top tops, and then the other ones would be other ones would be bottom. So these are tops. Uh, the tops would be the shirts. So that we're going to delete that. Delete pants, shirts. We don't need shoes. We don't need shorts. We don't need socks. We don't need all. Click OK. And now we have our tops here. So if we scroll down here, we have our sets, which are our tops. So those are the ones that are for our tops. These are the name set for our tops. If we didn't want to see that again, we can just click on that, bring the item down here. But if we want to get a quick view of our tops, I'll go ahead and click on the item, click on the tops, and bring it down here. And we have our tops here. And so basically, uh, this can also be done with grouping when you think about it. But that's just another way that we can use the name sets features for the rows. So with name sets, we can, you can see you can do it for our columns, you can do it for our rows. So it just makes the display of data on your pivot tables a little bit more flexible. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.